I'm here with uh, uh, Ray and Paige Morgan. Uh, Ray is a fellow Chicagoan. Chicago? <laughs> what is it? Right? You, Chicago? North Side. North Side Chicago. North Side Chicago. So I can't say anything bad, otherwise he'll, <laughs> he'll hit me. Uh, Paige is from beautiful Great Falls. She's from here. And uh, uh, so, uh, Ray, Paige, just something little about yourself so people can get familiar with who you are. Besides, you know, you're from Chicago, right. you're from here, and uh, maybe a little bit of something about what you've done, graduated from, whatever. And Paige, ladies first, we'll start okay. with you. So my name's Paige Morgan. I am um, born and raised from Great Falls, Montana. Um, I moved to Florida in 2010, and that's actually where we met. Um, I came back a couple years later, and then he came with me. <laughs> um, I was also in the Montana Air National Guard, and when I came back, didn't really know what I was going to do with my life yet. So thought it was going to be a two-week stint up there and then ended up um, becoming the family program manager, and now I've been there for eight years. So what brought you to Florida? I was wanting to pursue hospitality management, and so I had just gone down there to on a whim to work in a condominium and hopefully – you know, get some type really? of business experience. Yeah. Met him at a barbecue two weeks after I got there. So really not yeah. at a bar. No, no, we went to a bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll get into that in a little bit. All right. All right. Well, thanks Paige. Yeah. Yeah. And what high school did you graduate from? Great Falls High. All right. It's a good one. <laughs> yes. Sorry, CMR. <laughs> so my name's Ray Morgan. I'm an attorney here in Great Falls. Um, first year practicing coming up in my first year. Um, when I met Paige, it was about 11 years ago, I was coming back from my fourth deployment. I was in the Air Force for 10 years. We met um, in Panama City. I came up here for a wedding in Great Falls, and I was like, it was August, and I was like, wow, this Montana is awesome. That's how it we picked up. August. It wasn't in yeah. wintertime. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and so anyway, we, came, we ended up coming back up here. Um, I got out of the military, started going to school at UGF, working odd jobs, bartending, gas station, Pizza Hut. Um, um, graduated in 2019 after some considerable difficulties. Um, got licensed last year, and then, you know, we came to this church probably, what, four no, months ago? November, I think. Yeah, we jumped right in. Yeah. Well, yeah, we appreciate that. It's, it's, uh, we appreciate people that, that jump right in. But anyways, let's just jump right into your, uh, uh, how in the world, because uh, how, this is a, just tell them how God talked to you. <laughs> so when I was getting ready to go to law school, we found out, she was pregnant um, with Claire. No. He, he had just got accepted. I had just got accepted. <laughs> and the plan was for me to live in Great Falls sometimes, but then live in Missoula during the school year, and then kind of come back and forth, you know, long distance relationship. Now that's just law school, because mm -hmm. you already have your undergrad. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And so, so when we found out we were going to have Claire, it changed from, okay, well, now I'm going to be home every weekend. Um, I don't want to miss my daughter, mm -hmm. you know, being born and all that stuff. And so... I started driving back and forth from Great Falls to Missoula every single weekend in my little Civic, um, and I didn't realize how bad the weather. I mean, I understood it gets weird here. But it was it, it was a long journey back and forth, going through law school. She was born, which was awesome, um, but I really started struggling. I was already a social drinker, a pretty heavy social drinker. I was bartender before that, military, drank all the time. You know, the only time I was sober during the military was pretty much on deployments because you can't drink. But all the other times, it was just, that's just what you did, like we were talking about the other day. Um, and so anyway, I, I really started to struggle. My alcohol use intensified greatly during law school because I was so stressed out. And we had so many things going on, and that was kind of my go-to for stress. Um, and it snowballed pretty quick. I mean, within a year and a half, it went from, I'm a social drinker, to like, I have a serious problem. And that was probably my second year of law school, I'd say. Um, and so... I recognized that I had a serious drinking problem, and this was probably 2017, but I was also hesitant to nip it in the bud while I was in law school. It was kind of my was high functioning for a while, I guess you could say, but it snowballed uh, pretty out of control. I ended up getting a DUI. Um, I was just struggling to, you know, do the academic portion and meet my family's needs, and so uh, there was some point, you know, after graduating law school, uh, when I got my DUI, in between graduating law school and taking the bar exam, I got a DUI and everything else around me was kind of falling apart. My personal life was not doing well. And so I, um, wait, hold on. Go ahead. Did you know this page? So I didn't realize how bad it was until, I mean, it, 
when you when you live with an alcoholic, you start finding things in closets and stuff like that. And so that's when I knew it was bad. But when he got his DUI, I I was ready to be done. I was on a TDY in um, San Antonio, so he was here with Claire. And I just completely felt like she was unsafe, which right. she really, he, you know, he loves her. He would never want to put her in harm's way. But that's when I got back, and it was kind of, he knew that the ultimatum was coming. And so he, um, before I got back, you know. Yeah, I didn't really have any legs to stand on. I was, I, I think pride was my biggest thing, was thinking I could do everything myself, you know, and not asking for help from God. Um, and so I eventually did that, and I, I couldn't, I knew I wasn't going to be able to quit drinking by myself. I just knew. I had gone to AA, um, you know, it helped, but it, I wasn't ready to take that next step, I think. But by the time I chose, I was like, I have to stop drinking or else I'm going to lose my family, I'm going to lose my career. And so I got on my knees and prayed to God for the first time probably since I was a kid. And just, uh, I, I begged for him to remove, you know, whatever that drinking curse or whatever it was, just please right. remove it from me and I'll right. commit my life to you. Um, well, were, were you spiritual before this? Did you ever talk to God other than Not maybe really. for a test and I said, had dear God, give me an answer? <laughs> no. I, I mean, I was agnostic. I think I told you. I was never right. uh, confident enough to be an atheist in my life, but I was very agnostic. I was very curious about the world around me, especially after getting out of the military, going on deployments. But I was never super spiritual. Um, you know, I did think about these things, probably over overthink them. And so that's been, like I talked about with you, that, you know, one of the things is having faith even when, you know, I, I can't answer all the questions. Right. And his thoughts are not my thoughts type thing. Right. Um, yeah. And so that was kind of how that. Yeah. Well, so he, Paige. He went out and got a Bible, though. Right. So when he went out and got a Bible, I was raised, um, I went to church with my grandparents in Fort Benton. I loved going to church. Um, you know, they were Christian. It, I loved it. It just, you know, everything about it really? was great. Um, when I started going, when in high school, I started not drifting, but becoming more, well, I don't know if I believe this or questioning, becoming more agnostic. And then just putting it in the back of my mind. I always though would randomly pray, you know, and, um, I always knew that I thought that there was God, you know, but I just didn't focus so much on it. So when he went out and said, you know, I'm done drinking and I went and bought a Bible, I was compelled to go buy a Bible that day. He went to Barnes and Nobles and got one. And I was thinking because there was a, I felt like there was going to be pressure put on us to conform Claire. There's some churches that I knew that we weren't going to be a right fit for. And so I was really, um, I guess hesitant. hesitant. Yeah. I, 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 but he said, Nope, this is my thing. I, you know, and then it slowly just, I started slowly cause I was seeing the changes and so I'm like, well, this is good, you know, and then COVID happened and we were at home more and, you know, he would read the Bible every single night. And then I started like on my own, you know, getting the Bible app and quietly just starting to, but, so, so you're like covertly <laughs> kind of, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> so, but that last year, 2020 was hard for a lot of people, but it was probably the best year we've ever had. And then by the time we decided we, we have our friends who go to this church too, and I work with her, very good friends, um, we decided that we wanted to start looking into churches because we were both becoming more religious. And we found a church in town. We went to our first one. It wasn't the right fit for us. And so then she actually called because her daughter started going to Foothills and spoke to Josh just to kind of get a lay of the land because we didn't want it. We wanted it to be right. And then when we came here our first Sunday, we loved it. Like, what are you doing? You know, and it was just, I had to surrender. That was the hardest part for me. And so, but when I did that, everything kind of fell into place. And uh, I felt absolutely compelled to go to Barnes and Noble and pick up a Bible and bring it home. Um, And I did. Uh, And it just, yeah, it kind of changed everything for us. You bought the King James version. So it was a little hard for him to read. Couldn't read it. It was very difficult. (laughs) (laughs) But I tried. That felt like it was. Um, I mean, that was the biggest part that I think demonstrated to her that this was something different. This wasn't just me toughing it out, white knuckling through, you know, trying not to drink. Easter 2021. Are you glad to know that you have confidence in your Savior, Jesus Christ, and how he is changing your life and your life? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What about in your marriage? 
we have a great marriage. I think that, I mean... That's brought us so much closer we, together. Because I think that we have talks at night, like, about God, about the Bible, about Jesus. And it's just, like, it's just more fulfilling, almost, than regular, you know... Discussion. Regular marriage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. We yeah. have friends, you know, who, like, I mean, and, and they seem happy, but it's, like, it's not... The foundation is really there, I feel like. Oh, I agree. And yeah. so... Foundation is everything. Yeah, we're really, we're really excited for Easter this year. Um, I... For Christmas, I was excited to come here, and then we had car trouble, and we couldn't, my battery died while we were w w walking out the door, and I was so sad. I cried and cried, and we watched the service online, but really? I was so sad that we missed it, and then now, like, for Sunday, and I could even get emotional talking about it, we're really, really excited to be able to raise Claire with that in her life, and it's really something that we're looking forward to is this Easter. Amen. I can't top that at all. <laughs> How about you? Nope. <laughs> no. I, I just think for children to understand that it's not about bunnies, Easter egg hunts, you know, that is a, it is about Jesus. It's about his love for us, that he died for us and rose again, you know, to give you guys a better marriage, right. to help you be a better mom and a better dad. Mm -hmm. And then to be a part of, you know, we're, we're not a super great church or anything like, like that, but to be a part of a ministry that you're plugged in and you get to be a part of your child's understanding God's love. Right. Uh, that, I don't think it gets any better than that. We, most people come to a point in their life where they're either going to run to God or they're going to run away. You know, you could have stayed and, uh, you know, tried to power through the whole alcohol thing, mm -hmm. power through the rest of your uh, law school, you know. Maybe you would have made it. I'm going with no. Right, Same. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> Same. You know, did you ever go, why are, are people that f afraid to choose God? I've thought about that a lot because I think I was for a long time. Even when everything was pointing in that direction, I just couldn't give it up. I couldn't just, you know, that means I have to, that means you have to change mm -hmm. and you have a commitment. And I think that's what scares a lot of people is living a life of, you know, we're trying to emulate the life of Jesus. You're never going to get there, obviously, necessarily. But um, that change and that thinking ahead to like, wow, this means I'm actually a Christian now. I have to, you know, practice what I preach, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's scary for a lot of people. It's scary for me. Yeah. Any last words, Paige? Um, thank you for having us. Yeah. And oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, we are very happy to be here and we're excited for Sunday. Yeah. So we're looking forward to it. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Apologize for our batteries going in and out. <laughs> but uh, uh, really, it's just, it's great to, I, I'm glad you guys got to meet uh, Ray and Paige, uh, know them a little bit more and know that, you know, Easter 2021 is a lot different than Easter 2020 and all those prior to. And our prayer is that everybody this Easter would understand that it's so much more than, you know, just it, there's nothing better than families getting together and, and little kids enjoying it. But it's the resurrection of our Savior who gives us life and life indeed. So thanks for viewing and you guys have a great day.